Hello. Uh, my name is Stuart. <laughs> um, and I have a question for you. What do these three people have in common? So I give you like five seconds to reflect on that, okay? Anyone? <laughs> and the left one is uh, like an engineer, a technician. He uses his soldering iron to come up with a new sustainable lamp, a pixie, we call him. And then right top one, that's Willem. Willem is a cook. He uses his cook's knife as a tool because of, he dreams of a world where the relationship between farmers and consumers is re-established, because oftentimes it isn't. And he uses his restaurant and also festivals as a platform to tell that story. And then, bottom right, that's Tom. He's from the band Deus. He uses his guitar as a tool to conquer the world with his beautiful songs. And what they have in common is that they were all stars at our festival Welcome to the Village this year. And by inviting those different kind of stars on our festival, last year we made a really interesting discovery. I would love to tell you about that today, but first of all, I'll give some context, okay? So, the Welcome to the Village Festival um, celebrated its third birthday this year. It's a festival that attracts about 7,500 people. Uh, there's five stages, 100 bands and DJs. There is good food, good music, and very nice people. And um, we organized that festival with a great team with uh, self-employed cultural makers. Um, and we dreamt of organizing a festival. <laughs> <laughs> that was surprising. <laughs> and also a festival that has a story to tell. We dreamt of organizing a festival that is not a commercial festival, but a community-based festival. Our festival aims not to make a profit for a few people. Our festival aims to have a lot of people contribute to working together on making something very beautiful. So, in a sense, it's our sort of happy protest against the world that is increasingly preoccupied with um, efficiency, um, with upscaling, with profit, with becoming larger. And we think a festival or our world can also be a world that, goes, that is about working together, where everyone counts, and where it's beautiful to create something together. And that's why we called it Welcome to the Village, because we think a village has this really good measure where people work together on something beautiful. Our festival is therefore homemade, we say. So what you see here is uh, some of our volunteers working in our, in our vegetable garden, in our urban farm called Awesome, to the south of Leeuwarden. Um, what you see here is a stage we created out of 700 wooden pallets. We work with a I think 60 or 70 volunteers, and they're very different sort of people, very different kind of people, together in a big warehouse in Leeuwarden, where we create our location design together, using all sorts of old stuff into beautiful new stuff. And we do that with over, I think, exactly 581 volunteers. So it's quite an operation to have everyone work together and make that beautiful three-day festival. We not only work with volunteers, we also work with a lot of different partners. Partners can be uh, schools, colleges, universities, they can be cultural institutions, um, they can also be civil servants we work with, they can obviously be a lot of companies we work with. And what we have in common with all the partners we work with is that we try to recreate a world for three days, our festival, that works where we can live in our little utopia. Um, and it's interesting because that creates a place to play, a place to drop your mask and be yourself and interact with a lot of new people. One of the interesting partners we had last year um, were guys from the Technical University in Delft, and they brought this machine. This machine, what you see here, is three big cans. And in those cans, there is bio-waste. So potato peels, banana peels, you name it. And the technical guys uh, who created this um, created a little instrument, and they attached that to that 
I don't, I'm, I'm definitely not very technical, so bear with me. Um, they created a machine so you could power your phone using the gas that came from the waste. So you could charge your phone on banana peels. That's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> and then 100 meters further on, on our festival, there was an artist, a sculptor. And this sculptor created a sort of a Mad Max-like um, weird sculpture that is, in fact, uh, a fireplace. Well, what I mean is you chuck some wood in there, you set it to fire, then all sorts of fumes come up through those filters, and at the end, there is a lawn mower machine. And that set his artwork into motion. I only have here the picture of the, uh, of the engine. Um, but then something happened on Sunday morning. It broke down. And the artist was panicking because he still had a day to go. So what was he going to do? Our engineers couldn't fix it. He couldn't fix it. Um, but then there were those guys from the TU Delft, which weren't very creative guys, but they were definitely very technical. So together with uh, our sculptor, they started working on those two machines and tried to fix them together. But obviously, this one runs on wood gas and the other one runs on biogas. And they needed all sorts of switches and screws and rings to connect the devices together. And luckily, we had the guys from Fries Club uh, at our festival. It's a mobile fab lab. So they were able to print, 3D print, rings and bolts and screws. So we could, like, <laughs> on the spot, <laughs> connect those two machines together, and what then happened was like two and a half hours of doing this. <laughs> so it didn't work. Um, <laughs> but it worked after three hours. All of a sudden, they got it to work. And uh, nobody expected it would work, but it did work, and there was a lot of high-fiving going on, and everyone was very happy, and then they started drinking. <laughs> It's a festival. I remember us standing there, look, looking at what was happening uh, with that creative guys and those very technical guys. And then we thought, aha, we made a discovery there. Um, festivals are great places to relax. They're great places to go and drop your mask. Festivals easily attract directors, cleaners, project managers, uh, designers, painters, singers, creatives. They easily go to a festival because they love to be at a festival. They feel playful. They interact easily with new people. And uh, we saw that happening at our festival. We saw that happening with those two engines coming together. And is that a new phenomenon? No, definitely not. To the left, in fact, a festival is sort of a year market, really. To the left, you see an old year market in some German town in the, I think, 16th or 17th century. Year markets were places where um, farmers came to sell their goods, where traders came from all over the world to sell their goods, to sell new goods, new ideas. People came to enjoy the music on stage. People drank together. People went home with new inspiration. People went home with new products, with new corporations. And that's still very urgent today, because to the right you see a bird's eye view of the Burning Man Festival, considered one of the hippest festivals in the world. Burning Man is held in the Nevada desert in California, and it is sort of the home festival for the whole Silicon Valley scene, because that's very nearby. Burning Man is a festival where CEOs go to, where prototype developers go to, where engineers go to, where creatives go to. Burning Man is a festival where they test out new, innovative ways of working together. They test out new products, and everyone, or a lot of people, go home with new ideas in their head and a new understanding of how things could work. So that was the first thing we learned from that aha moment. The second thing we learned is, in fact, a festival is a temporary mini-society. Imagine, imagine that, desert in an, uh, that, that, that desert festival, or Im imagine the Welcome to the Village Festival, which is held in a nature area. Imagine a nature area. And now imagine that you want to organize a festival there. There's nothing there. 
You need to bring roads, you need to bring water, you need to bring electricity, you need to take care of safety, you need to bring the amusement there, you need to bring everything there. So, in fact, you create a mini village, but it's a temporary village. And actually, that temporary village is not a whole lot different than, for instance, Bolsward. Bolsward is one of the famous Frisian towns. There is 11,000 people living in Bolsward, uh, which is almost, or just, just a bit more than we have at our festival. Uh, Welcome to the Village has 7,500 visitors, but then there's the crew, and then there's the volunteers. So, in fact, we have 9,000 inhabitants in our temporary village. But there is a difference between Bolsward, which is a permanent town, and our temporary village. And that is that our festival has a fence around it. And because it has a fence around it, we can actually measure anything that goes in and everything that goes out. So it's sort of a living lab, basically. And the realization we had in that aha moment earlier was, aha, if we can come up with solutions for our temporary festival, can those ideas then also change the world? And if we think, if we think that, how would we organize that? Um, so we did an experiment this year. At Welcome to the Village this year in July, we hosted uh, a, 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 um, an experiment which we called Dorp. Dorp is the Dutch word for village. And at Dorp, we invited over 100 creatives, artists, technicians, engineers, technical students, creative students, civil servants, you name them. And we asked them to, for seven days, come up with solutions to challenges we have as a festival. And they are the same challenges a permanent village has. They are issues of waste management, they are issues of sustainable energy, they are issues of people working together and living together. They are not new. So we created this think tank R&D environment where we, together with also a lot of companies, we're trying to come up with new solutions to first make our festival more honest, more sustainable, and then feed them back to the real world. And it was an amazing week. There was so much energy, and there were so many good prototypes tests. We also invited 10 young entrepreneurs with a prototype. I'll show you two, because otherwise my story will be a little bit too long. The first was Jan. He's in the tent. <laughs> Jan... Um, was at a festival a couple of years ago. Uh, I think it was, I don't know which festival it was, but he was at a festival and he left the camping site of that festival and then he was looking around and he saw a lot of mess. In Netherlands, there are 774 festivals with an audience larger than 3,000 people each year. 21 million visitors go to festival in the Netherlands every year. And if you look at the waste on the camping site where people stay at a festival, almost 25% of all the tents people sleep in are left behind. Then you can imagine what a mess it is. That's all waste. It's all plastic waste. Jan came up with a sustainable tent, which is completely made out of cardboard, which is 100% recyclable and is waterproof. I tested it. Um, and we asked him to use our festival to, re to, to, to develop his tent more, to ask anyone on our festival to test it. Um, we sold 50 of them at our festival, so Jan was very happy. Um, Jan got a place to fail, really. People allow failure at a festival. People love to be an early adapter at festivals. They love to test out new things, and if it doesn't work perfectly, they accept that. So Jan was given a place to fail, Jan was given a place to work together, I think, together with a lot of different disciplines on his tent, and he was able to redevelop that tent for the, for the next year. Jan, um, because Jan used our festival as, uh, as, as his launching, basically, he got a lot of media attention, he got all the national radios, he got a lot of newspapers interested in that, and he sold, I think, hundreds of tents already to loads of different festivals in the Netherlands right now, and he's going to Australia in our winter, which is their summer, to develop it even further, and next year it's going to be big into production. So it's great that you can do that as a festival. I think that was a big success. The other one, um, I showed you the picture of the three guys at the beginning of my presentation. These are the pixies. The guy with the soldering iron, they created 300 
sustainable lamps to give light to a dark camping, to, to the dark route to our camping place. We did not want to bring a diesel generator there and then all the lights and burn a lot of diesel to light that route. We asked those artists from the Werk Collective from Groningen to come up with an interactive, sustainable um, idea to bring light to that dark route. And what they came up with was the Pixie. And you see the early prototype here. The Pixie was um, a lamp. Um, we made 300 at our festival together with our audience, and we hid them along the route to the camping site. And when you were given a Pixie as a visitor and you walked that route, then all the Pixies around you would like light up like a swarm of fireflies. So imagine having to choose between walking in a dark alley in a city with conventional lightning or the beautiful pixies which light up as the swarm of fireflies. I think you can really come up at festivals with creative ideas that can change the cities and the world and also have impact there, instead of only at a festival. This was a good success. Next year we'll develop that even further. The last example I want to give you is not a technical example. Um, we did a lot of technical prototypes. We, we had um, a toilet that turns urine into fertilizer, uh, stuff like that. Um, but we also did some more social. We also tried to solve some more social issues. So one of the things we did as a festival, together with the cook you saw in the first slide, we bought Janneke. <laughs> May she rest in peace. <laughs> And then we ate her. <laughs> Janneke, um, with, we asked ourselves, what would be the most logical piece of meat we can buy and serve to our visitors? And that's not a cow you ship in from Argentina. That's a cow from around the corner, Janneke. So together with Willem, we bought Janneke and we served her up into 1,400 portions. And we told the story of local food. Like, and that what we did is we reconnected the farmer who was also there with the people in the audience eating the meat. That stirred up a big conversation also in national newspapers. Next year, we'll buy two Yannickers and also some pigs and some goats and some chickens together with a lot of the um, caterers at our festival. So we're growing that. We're trying to use our festival as a lab to achieve a logical food chain at the festival. Because if we can do it at a festival, we can also do it in the real world. So, Next year, um, we're running this lab, not only at our festival, we're going to be doing it at six different festivals in the northern part of the Netherlands. Uh, we're going to try out over 50 different prototypes throughout all those festivals. And what we dream of is um, a review in the New York Times or The Guardian, you're allowed to dream big, <laughs> where they will write in 2020 that the northern part of the Netherlands has this amazing, innovative quality, this innovative scene, because there's a bunch of festivals working together to serve as sort of an R&D department, which is not housed in, in expensive labs, but in the mud and outside in nature, together with thousands of visitors working on products that make this world more beautiful tomorrow than it is today. Thank you. <laughs>